Hi guys, this is Alicia um, with Good Morning Sunshine. Um, I think we're in our day 36 or something. We're getting there. Four years more to go. Um, but today was vet school day five. Um, finished our first week today, even though it's felt like a month. But here we are. So today I have integrative studies. So we had um, some of our pods put together and then we came in as a whole class in order to talk about um, the integrative study we're doing. So basically they give us um, a clinical study um, they give us some information and then um, they gave us four stations in which we learn more and more information about the clinical case and then we have to figure out like what's wrong. Um, so I'm going to read you a backstory of what we got today and then I'll explain um, kind of the process we did to try and come up with um, what was wrong and then I'll tell you um, what is actually wrong. So we got this picture hopefully you guys can see it that's a white colt here we go Get back over here okay so um so here's the backstory um it says you receive a call about a two-day-old paint colt that died this morning so it was dead on arrival um the colt had signs of colic prior to death and here's the main backstory. Um, the owner has recently begun a breeding program. Um, she has built quarter horses and paint horses. Um, she has been in the horse business as a trainer for a decade, but is new to breeding. Great, right. And has had poor luck so far. She has selected breeding paint and quarter horses for coat color. She really wants to produce horses that have a lot of white on them. And for both breeds, she wants her horses to stand out for their beautiful white coloration. Um, unfortunately, she hasn't had much success in her breeding program. Um, she's had two perfectly healthy quarter, ho quarter horse mares unable to maintain a pregnancy. And she was thrilled um, when this paint mare's successful pregnancy, the first successful pregnancy and light birth since she started breeding two years ago. Um, and was even happier when she gave birth to a beautiful all white fowl with blue eyes. Um, she had been hoping for a maximum, um, white fowl when she bred a frame overo mare to a nearly white stallion, hoping, um, for a loudly spotted fowl. Um, the fowl seemed normal at birth and nursed well, but in the fowl's first 24 hours of life, um, he began to demonstrate signs of colic that progressively worsened and he died, um, later that morning. So that was the backstory we got. We also had to read um, an article about melanocytes um, and somehow like put them together um, with our pods. So then I'm gonna give you a backstory on like the article we read, like some information. Um, so basically a melanocyte is responsible for, for the pigmentation of your hair and skin. And they also provide protection against UV radiation. Um, skin being um, the main um, barrier to the extra, our external environment um, and it relies on melanocytes to provide photo protection um, and thermal regula regulation. Um, so there's two types of melanin in our skin. We have red, yellow, um, feo melanin and then we have brown and black um, EU melanin. Um, and then we have melanosomes um, which is melanin that contains genomes and then they are exported from melanocytes um, to adjacent keratinocytes um, and that's where most of our pigment is found in the keratinocytes it's a big word huh so usually melanocytes number remain constant um, but um, melanosomes can change in number size composition and distribution um, so there's also two types of mutation that can occur in melanin. Um, there's hypopigmentation um, and then there's hyperpigmentation. Um, it's based on the melanocyte number. So, and there's also two types of melanocytic, um, populations in our hair follicles. Um, there's stem cells and their progenies. 
Um, they are in distinct regions, both of them, and are tightly linked to the keratin oocyte population. So I guess they're like next to each other, the melanocytes and keratinocytes. Um, the melanocyte stem cells have an important role in normal human hair pigmentation and, and also ha hair graying. Um, um, pigmentation is regulated at a molecular level. Um, so then we got into the regulation of pigmentation. Um, so we talked about um, receptors here, the main one being the melanocortin-1 receptor. Um, which um, it is represented, it's a representative locus and major determinant of pigment phenotype. So, and then we got into um, how it was first identified, which it was first identified in, this receptor was first identified in mice. Um, it, this receptor encodes a seven transmembrane um, G protein coupled receptor. Um, so then it goes th through a whole cycle. I'm not going to get into that because it'd probably be very confusing, but just know it's like a pathway it goes th through and this pathway has to be done correctly. If not, many things can go, um, severely wrong. Um, sorry, I have to read a few things too. So basically, this article was just telling us how um, if there's a disruption in the receptor or a disruption in the pathway, and also, um, I know I talked to you about neural crest cells. Um, so basically, if something's changed, um, such as hair color, you're like selective, selective breeding for hair color, um, and something changed in the neural crest, um, it can affect, yes, your breeding um, for a certain hair color, but that, um, receptor also causes different things, different traits or phenotypes, um, not just for skin color, but it could be for neural things, um, it could, um, infect the intestines, the gut, um, not all receptors, like, code for one thing, so when you start changing things, it also starts, um, changing things elsewhere, which obviously could be fatal in this case, um, So as I was talking about before, the fetal melanin and um, EU melanin, um, they differ in size and shape and their packaging of granules, um, but they derive from a common um, tyrosinase dependent pathway. Um, but yeah, some of these effects could lead to um, different diseases or syndromes. Um, we have the Hermansky um, Pudlak syndrome and the Chediak Higashi syndrome. So, so once pathways start messing up, or you start selective breeding, or you start messing with different things, um, it could be fatal um, or it could cause deafness. That's um, what it caused for some of those syndromes um, loss of sight. So. So, oh yeah, I didn't tell you, hypopigmentation is the lack of melanocytes, and then hyper, of course, is too many. So, the hypopigmentation is kind of like alp albinism, so I think you all guys know, should know what albinism is, where you're all white, um, red eyes, you know. Um, so, I got into that. Um, So that was like the backstory on the article we had to read and then we had different stations where they gave us more information like I was talking about. Um, but anyways, in the end, um, we took some notes. So selected breeding for white coloration um, has selected horses with a ENDRB mutation. So mutations are causing... Um, things to go awry, like getting colic and dying. Um, so this mis uh, mutation um, resulted in altered neural crest migration. And neural crests are very important. That's what I was talking about earlier in the ectoderm layer. Um, 
And since melanocytes and enteric nerves arise from the neural crest, um, this uh, mutation can result in white coloration, which they were selected breeding for. However, um, so this horse, like in the end, had lethal white syndrome. Um, the heterozygous animals um, have the desired Avero pattern, and homozygous animals um, equal lethal, is lethal. So with selective breeding, um, this lady needed to um, do gene tests or genetic screening on her horses because some of these horses carried that gene, which became fatal. So she, we can't tell her that she needs to change her stallion because it's not working and he probably has the gene for the lethal white syndrome. And if you're doing it for two years and hasn't been successful, like, why are you keep doing it? Like, I don't know. So, yeah. Uh, so, we were supposed to recommend her on what to do. We said genetic screening, like I said, and to educate the owner on the pathways, neural crest cells, and all of that that we know. Some, um, they were just saying that owners, um, we need to have, like, back information um, so they understand why. Um, yeah. So it was kind of complex. Um, it was kind of hard to understand too. But they were just trying to put us um, linking the, um, what we learned this week, the article, and a clinical study to see um, if we actually comprehended the material. Um, but yeah, still very hard. But in the end, we got to the right answer. It just took a little while. So we had an hour to come up, see if we can try and come up with the answer. And then we all came together as 126 of us. And he um, went over the answer and why it was correct. But yeah, so that was my day. And then I actually had um, animal restraint lab today. So that was fun because I actually knew what I was doing. So we were... <laughs> Getting taught how to restrain a dog, um, TPR dog, and all that fun stuff that I already know. So that was a good time. And then I actually had to walk a dog today. Because um, we have to walk dogs every week. Um, but yeah. So that was fun. It was really hot though. But yeah, I actually knew what I was doing today in that lab. So that was exciting. And I got to see doggos and they were very cute. We had a dog named Hank. He was very excited. But yeah, um, that was my day today. Um, we didn't have lecture material today, which is good. So I'm definitely going to study and study all this weekend, all the prior stuff. And hopefully I can comprehend everything. I mean, I'm not doing too bad. I just feel kind of behind. Especially with the pathway stuff. I know things, all things affect everything kind of thing, but... I think we just need to know the basis of it and not exactly like what receptors yeah but anyways I hope you guys all had a good day today and we'll have a good night tonight um and I appreciate you guys you guys don't have to listen to the full thing but I appreciate you that you <laughs> let me tell you about animals because some things are very interesting some things are very boring but to be a well-rounded vet you have to know everything or most things, and keep learning. It's a continuing education thing. So, and I'm doing it for my animals, like my love for animals. I actually um, came home, and I just noticed like an hour ago that, um, I don't know if you guys knew, but I have a dog named Lillian. Um, she's only about three pounds, um, and she has a liver shunt um, that can't really be fixed. The surgery is like $6,000, but the chances of her surviving even through the surgery are very slim. Um, she could die on the table. That's why I decided against that. If some of you didn't know that. Um, but anyway, she's, she was supposed to not live until past six. I mean, she turned six in June, so she's been doing great. Um, I know what's coming. Um, but anyways... She now, I think, has a tooth root abscess. Um, I'm washing her face um, at the moment. Um, it's swollen on one side, and I've seen many tooth root abscesses. Um, that's how I found out she had a liver shunt, because I wanted her to get a dental. And 
her blood work was not great. Um, but anyway, she um, is sick now, I believe. Um, she had major diarrhea today too, and her face is swollen, so not the greatest of signs, but we're hoping for the best. Um, and I'm gonna see if I can get down the infection, but yeah. So that's really depressing. Um, but yeah, I'm doing this for the love of my animals. Um, also for animal care, like I don't, I don't know if you guys know my dream of opening a practice, but um, I don't, like I need to maintain a business, yes, and I need to get paid, yeah, but it's not all about the money, it's about the animals. Like I'm not gonna turn people away because I can't afford it, because vet med is very expensive. And we also don't get paid enough, so. But yeah, if you can give me um, a can of food, I will take that. I will save your animal. Um, I want to do pro bono surgeries um, for people who can't afford it. Like, I just want to give um, everything I can to so animals can survive. If they have a fighting chance, I will fight for them. Um, but anyways... Yes, I love you guys. I probably already said that. Um, and I hope you had a good night and good day. And also a good night tonight. So thank you for watching. And I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.